This video is on how to add an entity framework context to a web API project, do multiple joins on it using link to SQL, and return the results back from your application to the requesting application that called your API. It's going to be in Visual Studio with C Sharp, and let's get into the code. Thanks for watching DataVids. Subscribe if you like it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a query outside of Visual Studio, at least while you're getting familiar with how to do joins in Link. Go ahead and do it in SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio so that you know what to expect when you run it in Visual Studio. Therefore, you'll know if you got the results correct or not. So I've got here a quick join on one, two, three tables plus our table that we started with. And I actually, for this example, I'm using the AdventureWorks database from Microsoft, and I just scripted out one of the views that they provided to see what the underlying query was. I'll go ahead and execute that. And you can see I found like 1,700 results, and it's got a, a couple of columns from different alias tables, uh, P, PM, PMX, PD, which is product model, and um, et cetera, from the different tables, how they're aliased. We can alias them the same way in link. Let's go ahead and jump over to C-sharp and we'll put this thing together. Time now to switch to Visual Studio. I have here a brand new uh, project.NET Core web API, actually .NET 5, uh, nothing, just straight out of the box, file new project, okay? So let's go ahead and hook up Entity Framework to it. Then after that, we're gonna use link and then we're gonna connect to that database with Entity Framework and we're gonna use link to SQL to go ahead and do multiple joins to get our data out. Step one, NuGet packages. Go ahead and manage NuGet packages either for the solution or for the project. Hit browse. Type entity framework. And go ahead and install entity framework core. There we are. Just in case you're going to do any stored procedures or any um, custom SQL that just any framework doesn't provide, you want to choose that relational, install that one. You're going to want to install uh, just any framework core design, allow you to scaffold. You're going to want to install any framework core SQL server since we're going to do link to SQL with Entity Framework. We want our Entity Framework to pull and create models from SQL Server specifically. And it'll let you know if you're missing any as we get into this. Um, install tools, Entity Framework core tools. All right, let's scaffold it now. So we're gonna go to your NuGet package. Um, so go to tools, NuGet package manager, package manager console. Not NuGet packages, but package manager console. And here's where we're going to do our scaffolding. Now you're going to put in your connection string here uh, right after scaffold dash db context and then a space server equal. Now that's going to be your server. It might be an IP address if it's a remote server. Uh, in my case, it's just my laptop here. Uh, and then my database instance after a slash, then your database name, as you saw in SSMS earlier, it's AdventureWorks LT 2019 from Microsoft. Uh, and then we got trusted connection because I'm doing this locally. I'm not using a username and password. I'm using Windows authentication, not SQL Server authentication. And then I'm letting it know that I'm scaffolding SQL Server um, into models. I'm not using like MySQL or Oracle or something like that. And then output directory is just simply the folder name that you want to put your context and your generated models into. All right, press return. Here we go, excellent. So now if I come up here and I refresh my project, you'll see uh, a whole bunch of models have been created as well as your context here. So open up your context class. It might be in the middle of models if you have quite a few. And we are going to get 
the context class name and put it into the clipboard. So copy that. And now back in your program CS, if this was a console app, we would utilize that. But in this case, I'm doing a web API, so I'm going to come into the startup.cs. And I've got to put this context in here so that I can inject it into my controllers and services. Go to configure services. It's going to be right down here just underneath the startup. And right before add controllers, I'm going to paste in something that you see in the code that Microsoft generates if you're doing identity, which is just adding the database context. Except that instead of using the app DB context that Microsoft shows in its generated classes, we're going to be using the one that we generated over here. And there it is there. Let's go ahead and put that in place of app DB context. And again, you can get that code that I just pasted in there by creating a new project, making it identity. Now it's still underlined in red. That's because we have to import some namespaces. So I'm going to do control dot and let it know I want to use my project name dot models. Now it went green. Uh, and use SQL Server similarly, control dot. I need to tell it I'm using Microsoft dot entity framework core, which we've already installed the NuGet package for. I just needed to put the using at the top of this file now. So I clicked on that and that error went away as well. Now the connection string db connection, this would actually be not named db connection. It's going to be named whatever your connection string is named in your config file. In the case of this example, the connection string was generated and put into the on configuring method of that same class, the context that you were looking at earlier, AdventureWorks context. So what I recommend is that we remove it from here and put it somewhere else. So let's go ahead and go to your app settings.json file. And there's also another one uh, under launch settings.json. So just put it in the JSON file that's not going to go into your source control because you don't want to put passwords in your source control. In this example here, I'm just going to drop it into app settings.json as connection strings. And we'll give it the same connection string name that we had in a startup.cs, which is db connection. I'm going to go ahead and copy that into my clipboard and go back to app settings.json. And we'll put this here. And let's get the connection string that it generated here in our context class. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And then what you could do is you could create another partial class with the on configuring and an empty method and then delete this. That way, if you regenerate the models, it'll throw an error reminding you that you got to update that. So you don't want to get any connection strings put into source control. OK, so I'm going to go back to my app settings.json and I'm going to paste in that connection string here. I'm going to save everything. Time now to go to our controllers. We're going to inject that context into the controller so that we can use it. First step, you could do a DB context here and bring in DB context in the parameter and then assign your local DB context to the one that was brought in in the parameter. Um, but if you want anything specific to the class that we just created, you don't want to just call it DB context here. So go to your startup and pick the AdventureWorks context here. Most injections, you have an interface. You put the interface here like the iLogger. But in this case, we're just going to put the actual context name here. OK, control dot. Make sure you're using that namespace. And now we could use it. It'll just be this.db context. So for example, in our weather forecast that's generated when we built this uh, template, let's do var my data equal to db context. And we'll select our first table first. So dot product, because 
product was the first table we did, and we were going to in SQL Server, uh, SSMS, and we wanted to join it on product models as our first join. You'll notice there's an S on the end because it's been pluralized by the scaffolding. So products, I'm going to press enter, and I'll tab a couple times to keep things where we could see it, and do dot join. And now we can do DB context dot product models. And here's where it starts to get interesting. Add a comma after product models. And now we're going to work the same direction, products then product models, using aliases. So P for product models, using the lambda syntax. Once we hit that dot, you should see that the columns line up with the same columns that you had in the database for products. And I know that to be true because size is a column and it's showing in my IntelliSense here. So I'm going to do product model ID, then I'm going to hit comma, and we'll do product models. So for product models, let's use the alias PM, just like we did in SSMS. PM dot and IntelliSense. I know that for some reason IntelliSense isn't showing in my video today, but I'm choosing product model ID. Then I'm going to hit comma again. And now here, even though I've already linked the two tables together, I have to tell it what to select. Now, we're doing another join, so if we want, we could just select the whole table itself and worry about selecting when we're done with the link statement. For efficiency, though, you might want to limit it to just the tables you want to select at this point. That's up to you. Remember, it's not going to execute until we iterate or enumerate over the results. We're just going to do P, PM with our two aliases in brackets, then the lambda syntax. But instead of doing PPM, we're going to do new, and then we can use the curly braces and tell it what we're going to select. In my case, it's just going to be all of both tables. Okay. Now we're ready to close the parameters, which makes join go yellow. Press return, hit dot, and type join, and we're ready to do our second table. So let's do DB context dot and enter the name of the second table that we're going to join on, which in SSMS was product model product descriptions. That should show up in your IntelliSense. Hit comma, and then just like we did in the first one, we'll specify them. So I can do uh, the first one, which is actually both of these tables, since that join's completed. Why don't we call that PPM? So PPM, because it's all of product plus all of product model. And then we can do our lambda ppm dot. And here's the interesting thing here. You can pick either p or pm because we have all the columns in both those tables since we selected both p and pm there. So I can do dot pm dot product model ID. And then press comma, press return, and we'll choose our second table, which we have product model product descriptions. So let's do product or PMPD, same syntax as above, PMPD dot, and we're looking for product model ID, comma, and once again, we get to pick uh, how we're going to put this together as far as selections. So to start it off, it's going to be PPM, comma, PMPD. And then whatever we're selecting is going to be in new with curly braces. So I'm going to pick the whole tables again, PPM, PMPD. I'm not picking individual columns, although I very well could. And now let's do our final join. So I'm going to close this join. Press return. As you can see, it went yellow. I'm going to tab these over just so we can see a little better. Starting to come together quite nicely. Let's do dot join. DB context dot product descriptions and comma. Now let's do the original one, which was, um, or the one just before it, which is product model, product descriptions, but we can go all the way up to P. 
we'll do p dot and we're going to choose product model product descriptions dot and then we're going to do product description id comma now let's do pd for product descriptions pd dot product description id and i'm just going a little faster now because i think you get what's going on here and you want to get to the next part which is what do we do after the joins right so just real quickly we're going to do the um the p and the pd and we're going to put that into our curly braces with the new for our select and here since this is the last one you really do want to select something here but you could always do it a different way so i'm going to do p pd bring it down a line tab over don't forget to end your bracket there dot select just to keep it consistent because I mean you could put what your selection is needed in the new but I'm not going to do that and now let's put uh, result and here you have the choice to use um, a class that you've put together a model that's been generated with entity framework scaffolding or just an anonymous type I'm going to use an anonymous type here so I'll type new and I'll just pick columns and that'll be that uh, otherwise after the word new you would type the name of your class, right? So I'm going to go ahead here and just pick a few columns from the results. So I'll do result dot p dot. Then you've got p, the, the two items from above, so this probably looks familiar to you. Let's do ppm dot. Then you got p or pm. Let's do p dot uh, name. We'll do like one from each table or something. Lots of possibilities. So let's do ppm.pm, which as just to remind you, so the first one, when I was selecting from P, that's right from products. Now I'm gonna pick something from product models. So maybe the product with the product model um, date. And then Completely unrealistic scenario, but it's showing you how to get the data out, which is what you want, right? Dot PMPD, the description. Dot uh, product description. And part of the problem with this example is that all the names sound almost the same. I got two call two tables with the word description in it. But let's see if we can figure this out. So we'll do result. Dot. Uh, let's see. PD for the Product descriptions, not the product model product descriptions that we just did. Product description ID. All right, so this is put into my data. Now, why don't we send my data back to whoever requested this? Uh, since the default is weather forecast, I think we're going to want to have to put this into something else. So, so what we'll do is we'll make it a public async task that just returns I enumerable. Okay. And you'll want to put a wait in front of your call here since we're doing it async. It allows us to take advantage of that. And then down here at the bottom, let's do dot to list async. So it's going to wait for it to um, execute that query. And then you can look at what it is here, put a breakpoint on that, and return it. Otherwise, just put return here. Now let's take a look at how that looks. Hit F5 or play. And there's a whole bunch of data there <laughs> from the Microsoft database. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you. You got a web API here returning entity framework data from multiple joins. Have a great day.